You know, a high performance culture for me uh, personally means a culture where people know what they're doing. It's like a well-oiled machine. It's kind of like a platoon that you've got backs to each other and everybody knows which direction they're going. And it's okay if something goes wrong because somebody else can pick up the slack. Um, it's just the embodiment of a perfect team. I think it's crucial to set goals and expectations because otherwise, you know, we are not in sync in terms of what needs to be done. And we tend to focus on the immediate and the urgent rather than the important because we're just kind of doing the day-to-day -day ad hoc things. And then, you know, a half year goes by and we look up and we're like, what actual progress did we make to the really important things? Well, what turns out is if you don't handle those important things, they become urgent pretty quick. And instead of creating our own chaos, it's better to have a plan and then act methodically in order to accomplish it. If we fail to plan, we're pretty much planning to fail. And goals here are an essential part of that. I think the way that we implement performance management at Avast is that we need to set goals, preferably in the beginning of the year. Uh, we need to agree those goals you know, uh, throughout the team and through the company. And then we need to make sure that we have regular reviews. And then we can link those goals with rewards and recognition. So everybody doesn't just know what they have to do, but then also gets like very favorably rewarded for those things. Doing performance management at Avast, I think, is something that is going to be an iterative learning curve. So we're going to start it and we're going to keep getting better. But I think we need to start simply. You know, uh, there are managers that already do this. Um, the idea is to create simple, uh, measurable, uh, achievable, realistic, and time-based, so smart goals that, uh, that would actually like be uh, able to be achieved in the course of the year. So you know, start with like three things that you want to do and how you want to do them. So three what's and three how's. It's like the easiest way to get started. And uh, everyone can probably do it differently since, you know, there are people who are doing this in the company. Um, but that's a good starting point and we just need to kind of measure it over the year and make sure that it's linked to rewards and recognition and then take it from there. Well, other than having, you know, the SMART goals, which are uh, doable. I think the, the second most important thing here would be to make sure that everybody knows what everyone else is doing. So a good, well-oiled team uh, will be able to not just know their own priorities, but know how those priorities interlink with others in their team. And that means that if there are dependencies or things that are required from other people in the team, that they know about it and they can help each other. So it's not at the end of the year that we are surprised by anything that we couldn't achieve or wanted to achieve because of those dependencies that weren't transparent. So first thing, set smart goals. Second thing, make sure they're transparent to everyone. So I think that of the last you know, 20 years that I've been working, um, that I've experienced a high-performing culture twice. And uh, both times it was aligned by one thing. There was no competition within the team. The competition was really directed to the place that it belongs, outside the company. And it was so like really clear that everybody wanted the same thing. So it, it was kind of, you started with the principle of how can I help you get your stuff done? Not about me, 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 but about us. And I think a really good team always focuses on us and the progression of things together rather than as individuals. Mm -hmm.